data validation list is what we will see now. Okay, so I'll come here. See, here we are saying that the user is going to enter a name of a product over here. And based on that product, we are uh, fetching the profit for that product and that quarter. Okay, so if they give a name, some if they make a spelling mistake, let's say I'm looking for green tea and I just give green tea. I made a spelling mistake. Somehow I could not, I did not put one either. Will I get an output? No, right? I'll not get an output. Not available. Any error will come. So how do you make sure that when your user is providing the input to you or uh, trying to search for something, they always search for valid information? Okay, they might just know the list of things, but okay, maybe not the complete list. They just know a few random products that we are selling. How do we make them? Uh, how do we give them the information about the complete list of products that we are selling so that they can search for any product? They can search for any quarter or product. We create data validation lists can be created. So whatever I enter here, I need to cross check it with my data. A valid entry only has to be accepted in here. How to do that? I selected it. I'll go up to the data ribbon. On the data ribbon, over here, okay, in this particular group here, we have, this is data validation group. Here you have this icon. You notice this? There is one tick mark and there's one like stop icon. So when we go here and click on the drop down, we can give some data validation rules. One is we can create a list. So I will select data validation from here. And I love what? I love a list. I love a list. Okay, I'm working on this call, this cell on which I've put a data validation rule that I will allow a list. What is that list supposed to contain? The source. Source is what is that list supposed to contain? So I'll just close this, go back here and copy, uh, select the whole range. So the list can take data that is present in this range. Okay. Now let me expand it. It has come and I will click on OK. Now you will notice how this becomes a drop down. Get a small drop down arrow next to it. Now the user will be able to pick up any product of uh, his or her choice from this list. And based on the product that is picked up, we are displaying the data. Okay. Now similarly, this I will just make it center aligned so that it appears properly. Let's uh, do it for quarter also now. Okay. Right now it is taking quarter two. So quarter two Colombian, this is the value which we obtain. Here also let us give the users a list so that they can choose a quarter from the list. How? First, we need to select the cell. After selecting the cell, we go up to the data ribbon. On the data ribbon, we go to data validation icon. There we must click on the drop down. The very first option in that list, we have three options. We are looking at the first one is data validation. Now, when I click on data validation, it will ask me, what is it that you want to allow? I would like to allow a list. And what is the source? Now I need to, list has to be populated with some data, isn't it? The list is supposed to be populated with some data. So let's just take these directly. It's not allowing. Let me minimize this. These are the values that I will allow in the list. What are they? Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Okay, these are the values I'm allowing. Now again, I'll have to go and click on that icon there to expand it. The source is taken from this range of cells. Nothing else to do. All I need to do is click on the OK button. Now what happens? This also is a drop down. So user can choose any quarter accordingly, it will come. So if I go and select, click here, to enter a name of a product, if I click here, I get the drop down icon. So let's say I want to check decaf Irish cream. And if I click in here to enter the quarter, I get a drop down. Let's say I want to check quarter four. Accordingly, you can notice this getting updated. Decaf Irish cream in quarter four is here. How did we manage this? 
we are doing a nested lookup. We are traversing vertically, going to the column and to that particular place and then traversing horizontally and reaching here. Okay, to quarter four. So this is again, very interesting feature, very helpful feature to provide validation lists. It makes it easy for people to simply select from a list of items rather than typing it in where a chance of spelling mistakes, etc., could be there. Here, at least they are well aware of their options. They know that, okay, these are my options and I'm supposed to select from here based on which this is getting updated. Okay, I hope this concept is clear. So just let's quickly do a recap. Click on green tea section. Okay. So here, let us select green tea. And for quarter one, it is negative. See, this is negative. Okay, maybe your doubt is why is it coming in brackets? The formatting is done in such a way that wherever the values are negative, it is uh, being enclosed in brackets. It's a formatting issue. Okay, this is all currency and the formatting is such that negative values are enclosed in brackets. So if you're getting confused, if you feel brackets are going to be confusing, you can go ahead and customize it. More accounting formats are there. Okay, uh, you can go there and you can customize how you might want to show the negative values. Sample is here. You can customize and change it. Negative, you can indicate with a minus sign, but symbol, let's take uh, dollar. United States. No decimals. You see? Okay. All right. Um, right. So we talked about the VLOOKUP function, how it can be used in combination with match, which can identify the column numbers. When you have a data with a lot of columns, to figure out the column number might get difficult. So instead, we, we can use match to figure out what is the column number. We saw the drawback of VLOOKUP. First is you can't look up for something that is towards the left. You have to just keep going forward and forward. Second thing is, when you are doing a VLOOKUP, you can look up only one value. You can't look up an array. So to overcome these problems, we can use XLOOKUP, which can go in any direction, vertical, horizontal, forward, backward, upward, downward. It can go in any direction. That is the advantage of XLOOKUP. Next thing is, it can also return an array. So with one formula, you are getting multiple values. An array of data can also be fetched. And we can use nested XLOOKUP when we have to traverse in multiple directions, like over here, first vertically down and then horizontally across. Okay, we can use nested XLOOKUPs in such case, as we saw over here. And it is always a good practice to give named ranges so that it will be easier to reference a particular set of data. How you define the name ranges, you have to take care. If it is expanding data, you might want to select the column like this and give a name. If it's constant data, you can select like this and give a name. Okay, such options are there. Or you could convert it into a table so that expanding data is handled automatically. Then we talked about the validation list. How you can make sure that people are entering a valid value when they search for something by providing a list. How do we get the list? We just go up to the data ribbon. Over there, we go to the validation option. From there, data validation. Give the source, allow a list, and click on OK. OK, I hope whatever we have discussed today is clear. There was a little confusion with the true argument, but ignore it for now. Slowly, you will be able to understand. Some conditions are getting handled. When you give 0, some conditions get handled with minus 1. Some conditions get handled with a plus 1. So that is something you need to take a call on, depending on the business requirement. OK. So. Otherwise, over here, we saw plus one, minus one, how it was fetching a value lower than the match or a value greater than the match. So the concept wise, I hope it's clear. Application, you have to uh, do it based on your business requirement. All right. So here we will stop our discussion. Tomorrow, we will 
do index and match. We could not cover it today. We will cover it tomorrow. And then we will proceed to some maybe lighter concepts like simple text manipulation, et cetera. Okay, we'll, because this is a really difficult uh, concept. Next concept, I will take a slightly easier one and then we'll proceed further. 